This is the OV301 Precision Curing Oven. We have designed this specifically for composite curing and post-curing applications, but it is equally well suited to a wide variety of different industrial and scientific uses, wherever you need accurate and efficient temperature process control. You might have seen us using this oven in some of our projects, and it is perfectly well suited to curing of out of autoclave prepregs. It can also be used to post cure parts, molds, and cast resin systems, and precondition and accelerate the cure of a variety of different resins and silicons. And this does make it an incredibly useful piece of equipment in any composites workshop. These are manufactured right here in the UK by our manufacturing subdivision ECP. So let's take a look over some of the features, starting out with the main body or chamber. The panels of the oven are made using thermally isolated steel skins with a high performance insulated core. And this means that the thermal performance of the oven is highly efficient. The internal dimensions are 1,070 millimeters in width, 500 millimeters in height, and then 430 millimeters in usable depth. The internal shelf is repositionable onto any of the tabs that you see on the side wall here. As standard, the oven comes with a single shelf, but more shelves are available if you need them. At the back of the oven, we have the fan and the heating element, and this has been optimized to provide very uniform temperature profile throughout the entire chamber. On the left-hand wall of the oven here, we have the two vacuum ports. These are threaded with the sort of industry standard quarter inch BSP thread, which is compatible with most vacuum and pneumatic fittings. There are a few ways you could configure these. The simplest is to just take an eight millimeter hose tail barb, thread it into the fitting there, and then simply push fit a silicon hose onto it. More commonly though, you will use a male quick release coupling, and this can be paired up using a male male quarter inch adapter and simply thread it in. Whenever you're making up threads on either side of these vacuum ports, use PTFE sealant tape, and that'll ensure a good seal, and it's more than capable of taking the temperatures of the oven. These are the vacuum ports from the outside. They have the same quarter inch BSP threads. And again, the simplest way you could set this up is just by screwing in a hose tail barb and connecting that onto your vacuum hose. We do also have, as an optional extra, a pre-made vacuum valve assembly, which has got a glycerin filled gauge and an isolation valve. And these simply screw on, again, using PTFE sealant tape onto the side of the oven and make a very neat installation alongside a vacuum pump. Clearly this could be used with any vacuum system at all, but I'm gonna pair this up with our EC4. So we'll just drop the pump in there and then simply connect it up using a silicon hose. With the vacuum line installed, we can now look to connect the power to the vacuum pump. Now we could just plug this straight into the mains and manually operate the pump, but the controller on the 301 is capable of automatically switching a vacuum pump up to 500 watts. And in the case of our EC4 vacuum pump, this connector will plug straight into the bottom of the controller. But if you do want to run it in this configuration with the pump on the left-hand side, you'll also need to purchase an IEC extension lead to bring the power over. The extension lead from the vacuum pump plugs into the power outlet on the underside of the controller and it is restricted to and fused for no more than 500 watts. So it's really important that whatever vacuum pump you connect to that doesn't exceed that draw. For the main power supply to the oven, we have another IEC connector and that just plugs into the back here. It operates on a voltage range from 220 to 240 volts and can run on either 50 or 60 hertz frequencies. It's fused at 12 and a half amps and this means that for the most of the world, you can plug this into a standard mains power outlet. However, if you are on a 110 volt supply, such as in the United States, you can't just plug this into a normal wall socket, you will need a high voltage supply. Now, most of the time that can be easily installed, but please speak to an electrician beforehand to see if this is an option for you. So we're all connected up, let's now power up the controller. The controller has been developed in-house by us specifically for this oven, and its advanced user interface is vastly more intuitive than your typical industrial controller. So if we look at the home screen here, we've got the settings at the bottom, and this is where you can configure things like the units and set points, so maybe you want to change it to Fahrenheit, change the date and time, and that sort of thing. But then we have the main operating modes. So we have the standard operating mode and the program operating mode. Standard operating mode runs like a conventional oven, so it just targets a single set point temperature. Whereas in the program mode, this is where you can configure multiple steps in temperature, adjust the rate of change, and create complex cure profiles. And this is what's known as ramp and soak control. So let's first take a look at the standard operating mode. You can set the target temperature here at the top anywhere between 20 degrees and the maximum operating temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. 
and then you can run it with the timer off. This is where it will just run continuously until you manually turn the oven off. Or if you set the timer, it will run for a predetermined amount of time before switching itself off. If we now look at the program operating mode, it's pre-programmed with a number of ramp and soak programs that match up to many of our products. So if you just wanted to run, say, a cure cycle on XC110 prepreg, you would just find that program in the list, double tap on it, and press run. And once you press run, it's now starting the ramp and soak program for that particular material. Should you need to edit or create a new profile, this is really easily done and requires no prior knowledge of industrial control. But of course, the support material does go into detail on this process should you need it. You can also automatically operate a vacuum pump. So if your process is running a vacuum pump, you can set it to shut the vacuum pump off at the end of the programmed cycle or at the end of the timer cycle when running in standard mode. And that's just done by toggling the automatic mode at the bottom here on the pump. To manually control the pump, to turn it on and off, you've got a switch in the top corner here, and that just turns the pump on or off. Another great feature of this oven is its ability to data log. If you insert a standard USB memory stick into the front of the oven, it will detect that and automatically start logging the chamber temperatures onto a CSV file on the stick. In addition to that, you can also add a second auxiliary probe. So that's plugged into the front here, and then you just feed this line through the seal on the door and attach it to your load. And this allows you to log the temperature of the load itself alongside the chamber temperature. So that covers the main features of the OV301. And as I mentioned earlier, these are manufactured in-house. So any part of this oven would be available as a spare part if you needed it. I do hope this has answered any questions that you might have had on the oven, but of course, if you are left with any, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You've been watching this on the Easy Composites Products channel, where we take a closer look at specific products in our range. Of course, our projects-based composite tutorials can all be found on our main channel, and there's a link to that in the description below. For further information about this product, or to place an order, please visit the Easy Composites website.